Pull up a stool and pour yourself a pint, as you're about to join three intrepid drinkers, Kevin, Justin, and Mark, as they embark on another beer-tastic voyage. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Beer-Tastic Voyage. My name's Kevin, that's Justin, that's Mark, and we're ready for more beer with you. Hooray! I think you're going to make a buff with that for a minute. Let's I was, get ready I was to drink beer! I thought it, I was expecting it to just increasingly just I, go up. I didn't, <laughs> want, I didn't know how far back to lean in order to go to the proper volume without destroying Justin's eardrums more. <laughs> not knowing Which one of you be concerned about that? I'm not, <laughs> it's year three. I'm trying to grow, yeah, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it was year three, but now that I know it's year three, I'm trying to grow. Um, where is this, where is this brewery from? This is... Uh, we are drinking beers from Atlantic Brewing Company out of Bahaba, Maine. Bahaba. Bahaba, Maine. And these are transported back by uh, my old man. Thanks, Pops. Who, uh, who in the past six months has, even though he's been retired for a couple of years, finally sold the house and bought a giant RV and lives at my house when he's in town <laughs> now. And uh, Randomly finally yeah. enacted the retirement. Plan. Yeah, and now just uh, spends his time at home when he's home. Planning his next adventure, and then gets in the RV and goes and drives. And he happened to be in Bahaba, and uh, saw this, and actually sent me a picture of a really funny sign that was on the door. I think I forwarded it to you guys, like when he sent it to me. And then uh, he goes, "Do you want any beer from me?" I'm like, "Yes, you can get me a mix of six, and these are three of them." So looking forward to drinking them. I've been hanging on to them probably for about three weeks, four weeks now. Sounds good to me. Um, this first one. I'm really interested to, to test out is uh, it's called the Mount Desert Island Ginger and it's a wheat ale brewed with fresh ginger um, now going into the, uh, the date data here apparently this brewery was they didn't have a whole lot on their website like what their story is but they started no like way. they started like 1990 and apparently out we're two buddies friends I don't know I'm not your I, friend guy listen pal I'm not your buddy pal but they went up, but they started in like 1990, and in the first couple of years, they outgrew their first two facilities pretty quickly. That's always good. And then by 1990, I think 1995, they were in their third and final home, and I think they're working on like this a this is not even my final now. form. And they basically distribute amongst the area and support two different uh, like group hubs. That's super cool. Thanks. Um, so the Island Ginger that we're drinking is what first started in 1993. It has Nottingham yeast, which I thought it was really cool that they listed what yeast they use. That, that is pretty, pretty neat. You don't normally see that. English style yeast for a weed ale is interesting. Um, they have Pilgrim and WGV hops plus WGV. That's the, that's a new one for me. No, that's not yeah, Pilgrim, I got Pilgrim, nothing. Pilgrim's an English is Amer- is an American American English style hop. Okay, uh, pale malt and WGV. wheat, and of course, it, and it comes in at five point seven. And let's try it first, and then I'll read you the little up. Uh, Flavor profile. That Sounds good. It. On the aroma for this one, when I, when I smelled it, I got um, I got more of a candied ginger rather than like that fresh sharp ginger. Apparently, WGV stands for white bread golden variety. Oh, so it's another English style. Yeast, okay, yes. so okay, it's a, I thought it was Golding's Kent or whatever, but yeah, I guess yeah, the yeah, white yeah. bread is the American version. No, yeah, no, that, I think that one might be straight up English, but uh, it's brewed by Bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bread that's born toasted. The, uh, but the aroma I get it. I mean, Shut up, Koala. Mark, Mark, Mark is having a seizure. Um, Mark uh, would probably speak to this better being the resident ginger expert, but to me... It needs it, more. It's, well, you no know, shit. It's you you <laughs> every ginger drink ever. But uh, the um, the ginger quality to me is more of a candy, sweeter ginger than it yeah. is the sharper ginger, which is not not a bad thing. It just, when, I, I would, when they say fresh ginger, I was expecting that kind of sharp, um, that sharp ginger on the aroma. It depends on when they're adding it. Like, if they're throwing that fresh ginger into, like, the end of the boil, then the, the heat of the boil is going to temper the uh, sort of burn. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, I think, like, one of the compounds is, like, zebranol or something like that. Zebranol? Yeah. Okay. In, in fresh ginger, that when it's exposed to heat, it transforms into a different compound that is less assertive. Okay. You're a liar because ginger is not black and white. <laughs> it's a zebra joke. Got it. I was there for you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the chuckle. Um, 
Um, after first sip, it tastes just like a uh, like a slightly alcoholic ginger beer. Mm. Like not even like there's strong alcohol. Like what I'm saying, like there's such faint taste of beerness to it. And then, but other than that, it tastes basically like ginger beer. If it was more effervescent, I'd be like, this is just Canada dry. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a really good assessment. But I get, um, and I think what lends to that, I get like... It's not nearly as sweet. That, that or like, I, I have some tummy troubles it's and my more, mother has started the carbonation. Out it's more Schweppes than, than Canada Schweppes, dry. Okay, yeah. That's pretty accurate, too. Did you know that there actually was like a Dr. Schwepp? No, in like 1863, like he's the guy that did this. Like he was working on a, uh, like selling like all that kind of like uh Oh yeah, you know, Dr. Schweppes hot dog water elixir. I got you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Step right up. The uh, he was Swiss. I don't think he spoke English. Though Swiss has like six national languages, so he did. Swahili. Um. So I get more um like a tartness from the wheat. I think. And then the kind of uh, dryness from the ginger makes it uh, pretty pleasant. I, I would like more carbonation, though. Like, a, a lot more. Yeah, I mean, that might be one of those ones that this, like I said, this bottle's been hanging out for a couple weeks just in my in my kitchen. Okay, that could do it. Um, and then just, I threw it in the fridge today, knowing that we were going to be drinking it. So, might have lost a little bit while it was hanging out. That's possible. It's still, I, I still really like it. It's, it's good, yeah. It's refreshing. It doesn't taste like beer. It tastes like... Ginger beer, like I would give this to a child. Like if you didn't, <laughs> if, you, if I didn't know that this had alcohol in it, I would hand this to a child and be like, "Yeah, you can have this." Oh wait, it's got alcohol. Is it less than five? No. Okay. Fuck. Um, no, I mean it's five point seven. So maybe a, a stocky child can handle it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they call them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They call them husky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, stocky's not cool anymore. No, husky. Husky's the way to go. Okay. Husky size jeans. I was, yeah, I was. Big proponent of those in the middle school, <laughs> high school. Um, I'll, I'll kick off. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead with the, the flavor uh, thing. Okay, okay so this, yeah. our original brewery was located next to a Thai restaurant. We absorbed the ginger aroma constantly wafting through the walls, and finally gave in and decided to try brewing with it. We knew that a good brew needs a crisp fish to balance the sweetness of the malt. Usually, hops serve this purpose, but in this beer, gingered root does most of the hopping. Quote unquote. This result is a delicately spiced brew with an exotic flavor profile. So, I think it, um... Yeah, you definitely don't get any kind of hop flavor or aroma from it. So, I mean, there's probably, you know, the hop, the, it says Pilgrim in the WGV, so it's probably just a, a touch of it just to say that you put it in there. So that it's legally, legally beer. beer. you know. Yeah, I think that the ginger gives it enough bitterness to... Uh, to balance any level of sweetness, it doesn't finish sweet. I think it's like you know, just a really well balanced kind of yeah. uh, finish. And I imagine that having this with some of the spicy Thai food would be outstanding. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, I could totally go with that. I am a big fan of. I like Thai food, and I think this would really pair well with a lot of it. It's entertaining to me, like the local Thai place to hear. Like you can order things like, like mild, yeah. spicy. And then, like, Actual Thai size. spicy. Yeah. And Thai spicy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. At least, you know, at least, you're, at least it's white boy spicy and then real spicy. At least it's not like uh, like H Mart where you have no fucking idea what any of the levels <laughs> mean. <laughs> yeah. <That's> crazy. <laughs> right. We still have to do that. So, um, one of the kids who was, went to, um, that I coach was on vacation over the summer, went back to China and brought back some weird ass candy. <laughs> and gave some to another coach for her birthday. And so we were trying it and tasted kind of like rubber, like the consistency, but had a little bit of the apple pear kind of flavor going on. But it was very weird and kind of confusing. But I ate like three of them because it's candy. <laughs> yeah, but it was blue and white stripe, which made no sense for apple flavor. That's one of those <laughs> <laughs> which is why I got so confused. That's one of those weird things. Like, you get dessert, like, at an Indian restaurant, and you're like, what the fuck happened to dessert? Like, <laughs> why am I having regular yogurt? Like, what, why is it dessert? <laughs> Pistachios? Dessert? Really? You you covered your candy in them? <laughs> like, nope. No, you sure didn't. <laughs> nope. And here's some more naan, because that's dessert, too. <laughs> they used the whole day from I will never say no to naan. No, of course not. And, they, and of course, Curry Club makes kick-ass... Uh, 
che- cheesy jalapeno naan, not cheesy, cheesy, yeah, cheesy yeah. jalapeno naan, yeah. I'm sure that, like, you know, they're, every Indian person that goes in there hates that they even make that, but it's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Let, but really, do they serve us the same food as the rest of them? No. Oh, no, they do. Yeah? At Curry Club, no, they okay. definitely do. Oh, I enjoy that place. I do, too, I do, too. Stuff gets the vindaloo there. Oh, my God, is that cleaner, clearer science is out. You'd think that she was huffing paint while she's eating that. Like, that's the sound she's making. She's like... <sighs> The whole yeah. time, it's like a, it's just either she's either going into frostbite or huffing paint. It's, it's that little, it's a little quiver in there. Yeah, yeah. She's I can't trying to make that. She's a, trying to suck it, suck the snot back in her nose. So, Mark, as our uh, resident ginger fiend, I know you think it needs more ginger, but where does it stand on your uh, rating? He could, he could be eating. It's a pine. It needs that. more ginger. Okay, pine needs more ginger. It's not not quite ginger drink. Not if it's not. Um, I think for me it's going to be Bomber. I think uh, two of these would be really good. Um, and again, like I said, I really want it with some food from that Thai restaurant. I rated it, right? No, no you did not. Oh. Okay. Around to you. I wanted to do that. You nodded no, along with us, so maybe you did it in your brain. Where are you thinking? I'm gonna go bomber. Okay. I think you're supposed to rub the. Uh, like, there you go. Yeah, that's the one. Can you get up, Justin? <laughs> Those only listening, which is almost all of you. I was. Because uh, I think only two people actually watched. I was goldfish lombing the, uh, <laughs> the front of the microphone. There you go. So, right. so what did he say? I'm sorry. I was like, bomber. Bomber. Okay. I like it. I think it's good. I, 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 I think I, it's a good beer and a nice start to uh, to what they're showing. Yeah, I would I would definitely drink that. I mean that would be that's one of those really surprising ones for me. Not that I didn't think I think they would hate it. I just thought that I, it wouldn't be quite as refreshing as it is. I think the you know, for me the, the ginger was very well balanced because I haven't destroyed my palate. Now again, if this were a ghost chili beer, I would also be the one always going, Yeah, I want more. Yeah. So Well, uh, you know, related yeah. subject. I'm getting what, fifteen pounds of blueberry honey? Me too. And uh, the plan is Where are you chili. Blueberry honey from? So the uh, WA Meadworks put it out to the homebrew clubs. Oh, cool. Like, hey, we're ordering honey from these people. Like, if you want to order with us, Let you know, us know, we'll put it in. Yeah, we'll get put it, it at, in, get it free ma- shipping. At the bulk rate. Right, yeah. Nice. So Justin and I are splitting a, a bucket of blueberry honey with uh, a couple of other guys. Uh, so we just get 15 pounds of that, and that, I'm. Um, the plan is for ginger and chilies. Okay. Because I want okay. to burn the senses. That's the like, maybe thing. some horseradish and mustard, too. We'll what we'll, is this? This is liquid fire. What's this? Do you ever want to taste again? <laughs> um, <laughs> this, what is this? It's called palate death. Yeah. Death to all um, Are we going with the stout or the brown ale next? The assertive. <laughs> the assertive <laughs> nuts. Right. Okay, so what's the name of this one? So this one is the Thunder Hole Ale. It is an assertive nut brown ale, which just lead, led us to a good 20 minutes of double entendres about yeah. Thunder Hole yeah. and assertive nuts. And if that's not your kind of sense of humor, I don't want to be your friend. True. And yeah, I texted my wife and let her know. Let her, told her to get the thunder hole ready. <laughs> that you were gonna have an assertive nut in the thunder hole. Yeah. So I'm pretty pretty excited about thunder hole. I gotta tell you. And in the end, we're just still twelve. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, we, we are every like every actual bad sense of humor pretty much stops yeah. there. Mess um, <laughs> some details <laughs> on the thunder hole ale that they've been brewing this since the original since the 1990. Really? Yep. Oh, it's a pretty fucking old uh, brewery company. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I mean, look, that's a uh, thirty. That's a uh, twenty, almost thirty years. Yeah. Right. right? Math is not my strong point, obviously. But <laughs> I'm a couple beers in now, so math is even less my strong point. Anyway, they use the Nottingham yeast again. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet money that's their house yeast. Yeah, I imagine so because it looks like almost all of them are using it. In fact, all of them on this list, all six that I got. Yeah. Have the Nottingham yeast, so I'm assuming well, that's their house yeast. TBC uses Nottingham, right? Yep. Or are they Windsor? Yes. No, one Nottingham, or the other. Nottingham. Anyway, yeah. it also has Pilgrim and Willamette hops in it. Willamette. Thank you. 
And it has pale crystal and chocolate malts, coming in at 5.8% ABV. And I'll read the uh, details of it a little bit later. I do you smell mind. assertive nuts? I do. I Specifically hazelnut, I'm going to say. This was a small assertive like nut right on my chin. Here. Yeah. I held it down there and it felt comfortable, so I knew there were nuts in it. Why with balls on chin? <laughs> um, mm. Pretty damn vibrano. I don't find it particularly assertive. Not on the flavor. I definitely don't. The nose, the nose, I definitely get it a lot of it, but flavor-wise, I would not call it an assertive nut thing. Yeah, I gotta say, reading that, I was expecting a very American-style brown ale of like really intense hop character to it, that really strong flavor, and I'm not getting that. No. It said it says American brown ale on it, right? No, oh. it doesn't. It just says it's nut brown. It, right. Nut brown, in my, in my experience, always, almost always tends to be an English-style brown. Well, ding, ding, ding yeah. to you, because the flavor text on the website says, our traditional English-style brown ale with toffee notes and an exceptional malt backbone. Roast the aromas and spiced hops, hit the palate up front with a finish of robust malty caramel. Which, again, guys, good job explaining your beer. This is a right home up. run right there. Somewhere. Just say nothing. Greg Kelly is stirring. Yeah. <laughs> he, he tends to be in text because I, I, I entered, I haven't brewed it yet, but I entered the brown ale for the throwdown I'm doing with him into yeah. the LIB and Ecom. And I call it uh, Down Goes Kelly. <laughs> 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 I get a text, he goes, Down Goes Kelly, huh? Yeah. Down Goes Kelly! <laughs> I feel, I feel like that should be like one of those dramatic, uh, you know, almost along the lines of a, uh, you know, Mato, 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 you know, like down goes. I will gladly do a dramatic reading of uh, whatever. If I if I win, I will ask you to do that. I will so do my I will do my Michael Buffer on the board. I will do my Michael Buffer and do that, and then go down goes. I appreciate it. Um, I love this. This is pretty fantastic. This is like my home run kind of beer. It is really good. The name set us up. Thunderhole! Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know what Thunderhole is. Maybe it's like, I think, I, I'm assuming it's a local spot. All right. Let's or something. Can out. someone Google Thunderhole in Bahaba? I'm going to try. It better not be some kind of weird strip club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it is, that still makes it awesome. Um, there was a podcast I listened to. It was a poker podcast. But they would play a game called uh, Hair Salon or Strip Club. It's a good game. And they would, because the names tend to be really similar, yeah. believe it or not. No, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> that Speaking was of great. Mark, did you find any fodder for our game, for our next game? Yeah, he didn't look. No, you didn't look. No. Okay. We need to look. Main and Thunder Hole. I got no autocomplete, so. Okay, that's not the good time. Um, let's see. I have no internet. That is super weird. Of course you're not. So just typing in Thunderhole, Google's suggestions are... You're a idiot. brave motherfucker. <laughs> Yo. Listen, your FBI agent... Tides. What, your FBI agent just went, what? What? What's happening? Help me here. Hell is the fourth one. What? Help me. My, my computer forgot your, your network. Four. Oh, I thought that might... That can't be it. My... <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. That's your best word. Oh. Nine. <laughs> okay. Five. Okay. Zero. Get your nine in there? Or you call Four. it lucky tucky? Four. Four. I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm telling you what I typed it. What the oh, fuck is next? I thought that was a question. No. Two. This is riveting. Two. <laughs> Zero. Okay. Four. Four. How many fucking fours are in this? Go. One. No, it's still the same four. He can't remember what the next one is. <laughs> he starts starting over. <laughs> Eight. Eight. That's it. You sure? Yes. Okay. Sure. Everyone come use March Watch. better be right. <laughs> Every one of our fucking listeners is going to kill us if this isn't right. Can't connect to this network. Your internet's now. Which one are you trying to connect to? Straight up. 5G1? Neither. None of those. Regular without any of those things. That okay. should have worked. I'll go to 5G1 then. Four. Nine. Nine. Five. Oh, I didn't get five. That's fucked. Sure. That, that's your fault. I don't know. I think you might have laughed and said five. Go ahead. Zero. 
four, two, zero, four, one, eight. I might have fat fingered this. I think we found the first second. To order a magic dialogue one, mash your hand against the keypad now. <laughs> Like if your hand is too fat, I don't need. I don't, I don't need to. I don't need to do that bad. Look up Bar Harbor, Maine, and Thunder Hall. Did you we say to you obtain a dialing one? <laughs> yes, you did. Okay, yes. Um, my my fucking dipping chicken did all the right things there. Um. No, I am absolutely in love with this beer right now. Like this is, it's malty. It's got a little bit of little bit of bite back to it to keep it earthy and not become overly sweet. Like. Apparently, it's a natural feature in Acadia National Park. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, so apparently, it's this place where. What the fuck is that? They they <laughs> built. Everyone else is here. Right? They they built yeah, a walkway right. along yeah. along. It's like this channel, like a tidal tidal channel. So when the waves come in, the waves like. Fly in and then like <laughs> smash and like spray. Right. So this is apparently like a walkway that like you know. Walk yeah, right. Okay. Like it will get drenched. Okay. That's probably close. It's like going on an outdoor Gallagher concert. Yeah, apparently. Minus the seeds. I don't want them. Huh. All right. Um. That video, yes. by the way, was done. This is Thunder Hole. <laughs> Two waves enter, one lives leave. Yes. I love this beer. I think that it is um, more, I mean, I was not, not aside, nuts aside. Um, it goes on more than I heard That's right. The, uh, um, the stand ball is kind of sentimental. Yes. Kind of sentimental. Yeah, for That's nobody's business. I, um, I think it's a phenomenal English brand, like just yeah. straight up. If you didn't mention nuts to me at all, um, I would just put this as an awesome Brown Although I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure they're in there. I think they just re meld really well into the style. Natural rock in the where the waves crash with a thunderous boom and high flying foam when the seas are up. <sighs> That's what she said. It has a phone number. Thunder Hole has a phone number? <laughs> yes. Um, and it's over 24 hours. Alright. Alright. Right. to Google. What's, what's uh, Thunder Hole? <laughs> what's that number? 207 288 3338. There's no fours in that, thank God. <laughs> You're calling this right I am right now. Did you know Thunder Hall is a small hold on, inlet? Hold on, hold on. Naturally carved. Oh, bullshit. I want to see Thunder Hall. You may enter it at any time or press star one. Oh, shit. Thunder Hall is a small inlet. Thunder Hall not a backslash! <laughs> it slopes <laughs> forward! It's forward slash. Yes. Alright. That's not, that's disappointing. I was really yeah. hoping they would say Thunder Hole. Welcome, Welcome to Thunder, Thunder Hole. is a small inlet naturally carved out of the rocks where the waves roll in. So, Justin, did you give it a rating? Or you just, again, proclaim that you love it? AcadiaMagic.com. I love it a lot. I feel like uh, it's going to be probably a growler. Let's put a growler on it. it, it I, think I, get, I think I can drink a lot of it. it it's really cleansing, too. It doesn't yeah. build in the palate. The phenomenal beer. Unbelievable beer. Um, I think I'm going to give this one my first keg of the of season three here. Nice. Um, because this is really the exact kind of beer that I want. It's This is the kind of beer that when I did brew, I, was, I wish I knew about to try to make. Um... And because this is what I want around all the time. Like, this is the kind of beer I could have with any meal at any time and have multiple of them. And this is really delicious. This beer with anything you need. Yeah. I really enjoy this beer. So I, I don't feel bad being it. Okay. All right, number four. What are you doing over there? Looking at a KD Magic Black You're way too involved in this. Give us a rating, Mark. What are you uh, it, it's, a, it's a bar for me. It is very good, but it's not. It's not. It's adjacent to my wheelhouse. It's not in it. Okay. Okay, I understand that completely. I appreciate, I appreciate that. That's interesting. It's wheelhouse adjacent. All right. Um, so the final one. So is, use caution when there is a storm nearby, even when it's many miles out to sea. Exercise extreme caution. So 
with Hurricane Dorian moving up the coast, if we get up there right now, we could probably get some mm-hmm. dope waves. We yes. probably could. It'd be amazing. Or we could die. Our hulls would get thundered. <laughs> Indeed. The rough seas combined with rogue waves can be very dangerous when near the shoreline, even when 100 feet away. Always remain vigilant and stay informed by listening to the radio, checking the National Park Service. Oh, man. Always make sure that children are supervised and close at hand. And tied to the rally. Fucking, they won't eat their lunch. Throw them into the tucker hole. <laughs> Road um, waves can and do happen. <laughs> Cadillac Mountain Stout. Dry Irish Stout. So, I'm going to assume that Cadillac Mountain is another location in uh, Acadia National Park there. Yeah, with a bunch of guidos on it. <laughs> hey! What hey. are you doing? There's Clay lives there. <laughs> there you go. Um, but this is a dry Irish Stout. Which is one of my favorite varieties of the stout. And to give you some details, this is another one that they've been brewing since 1990. The same house strain of yeast, assumingly house strain of yeast of Nottingham. Same thing with Pilgrim and Willamette hops. Willamette! And it has pale crystal chocolate, black hat, and roasted malt. It comes in at 7% ABV. Damn, that's high. So, this is their, uh, this is their big boy stout. Yeah, this is... That's very high for an Irish stout. And it is really dark. Yeah, this is uh, not light black. No. No, black, black. no light black. <laughs> black Mark, Mark, Mark tried to put it in his eye to find out whether or not it was clear. But, you know, it doesn't have the... Like most Irish stouts, it doesn't have a lot of head to it. It's not overly foamy. You definitely get the roast and the aroma. I got an idea, First, Rocky head on mine, because I gave it the very strong judges pour. There you go. I, I want to just point out, we're, we're three years deep, right? Been judging for tears. I can swear like a motherfucker now. I don't swear out of the glass. Yeah. I, used to bl- I, used to, I used to splash this shit all over the place like Thunderhole. <laughs> and I, fucking, I, I just realized I can actually do this now without making a mess. You're using your right hand. I, I'm we're, holding it in my left, so... We're growing. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not so good. good. No. I mean, listen, I can't do anything with my left hand. It is essentially useless. It may as well be vestigial. Like, my appendix does way more than my left hand does. I think I got it, but I made... Nope. I totally can't do <laughs> fluffy. No. no. Right? All day long. On the aroma, I get um, kind of a, a dark chocolate. Actually, almost, I should do it as counter sixes. So a little... <laughs> one good. person in this room got this. Little, and no other listeners got A it. little nutty. Um, actually, oddly enough, on the aroma. Unless it's the assertive nuts left over from the previous beer, but I don't think so. Look, it's very tasty, but I don't find it that dry. I think this is actually a quintessential dry Irish stout. I think maybe, well, all right, maybe, it's, maybe it's, yeah, yeah, it's more of like a Murphy's than a Guinness. Absolutely. And we all know Murphy's is the real dry Irish stout, real Irish stout. Guinness is not. Guinness is a phenomenal beer, but it's definitely a little Guinness. little ne- nebulous for that. Love Murphy's too. Murphy's is awesome. Murphy's is a really good beer. I love the uh, the roast on this with zero astringency. Cleans super well. I always enjoyed the Irish stout that they made at uh, John Harvard's. At Harvard's. Did they? Did he start making it out at um, West Hampton? I don't Hampton? know. I don't know, but that was always a good one. I haven't, and that place I haven't just, been out there in a year. So that place just had the right vibe, and uh, Harvard's had the right vibe that you needed to have a good Irish stout on. Oh, definitely. But that one was good. That dry Irish stout that they had there. I would Google it, but I, I can't type that many fours apparently. <laughs> Listen, that's a you problem. It's Not definitely a problem. me problem. This is really tasty. I am like crazy impressed by all their beers. I really like them. Yeah, I think the ginger is. I'm. I'm sad we're saving. We, there's three more, and I'm kind of sad we're saving it because I really want to try them right now because I've been very impressed by these three. That's, yeah, and we'll we'll definitely hit those up. Was, yeah, the other three that we have is their signature real ale that they call it um, a blue their blueberry ale, which they tag as America's first blueberry ale, really? America's original blueberry ale. Interesting. Like and Fighting words. The last one is um, the new guy IPA, which would be their most recent one of them, which. They started growing, I believe, in like 2010. Wow. And uh, That guy's not new anymore. And uh, seems to be not a New England-style IPA, but a classic... Uh, American, yeah. West Coast! Classic American IPA, where uh, I think the Columbus hops or something. But <laughs> Mark, Mark, just, Mark just threw a west side with both hands. I can't do it, Lefty. <laughs> I don't know. 
I can't do anything. Like my wedding ring gets in the way. I, I can't. I can do this. I can do the whale face thing. I, I can do, can do, do this? this. I can. Oh, that? Yeah, that I can do really easily. Oh, Jesus, wow, this is to. great. This is a great yeah. podcast. Yeah, we're, we're doing the stupid <laughs> shit you did on the bus in, in junior high school. <laughs> can you do this with your hands? Can you do this? Can you make Spock with both hands? Can you make them open and close? Um, this is only episode two. Yeah. No, so, this is a real. This is a really tasty Irish stout. Hashtag episode two. Yep. Yep. Um, I would be really proud of making this. Yeah, I I concur. If I made this, I would be super stoked about it. And let me uh, read you the flavor text from this. Outstanding smoothness and complexity make this a standout Irish Irish style dry stout. Dark with a creamy tan head, full bodied and flavorful without being. Cloying or heavy, roasty, and just a touch of bitter to finish. Oh, again, they are excellent at describing their own beers. Wholly accurate. I know I kind of say that as kind of like tongue in cheek, but we've read enough descriptors sometimes where they don't do that. Yeah. So I, a lot of times I, I, I do appreciate the script, the script is written to sell the beer, not yeah. necessarily describe the beer. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy this, and this is the kind. And we need a shot of Irish whiskey. And you can car bomb the fuck out of this. Yeah, let's go get some. Let's let's go get some Jameson, right? Do some drink a couple shots of Jameson. Have a pint of this, and man, we will be. I mean, um, there might be some of that in my house somewhere. I'll be singing Tula Lula 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 all the way the fuck there. We ended up at a Dropkick Murphy's concert in Saigon. <laughs> they put on such a good fucking show. Guys, we still yet to see. They them. are so much fun. I think I've seen them. Three oh, times. Uh, Boston. Yeah. Seen three times. It is so much fun. Them and Plug and Molly, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And I think even they would be appreciative of this stuff. I agree. What, what are you going to give it, Mark? What, what is your rating? I know you're you're a little like in between on it. it seems like I think it's a bummer. Like it's good, but I don't love it. Do you? Do you? I mean, generally speaking, is a dry an Irish stuff something you're gonna, gonna go after? I like an Irish style, yeah. yeah. I just... If you had a bone to pick with it, what would it be? That's my curiosity. I'm not saying it's, it's the most phenomenal thing I've ever had. I'm just wondering what your thought is. I think it could use a little more bitterness, honestly. Interesting. Or, or a little bit more roast, one, one or the other. Okay. I could, under, I could agree with you on a slightly bit more roast, but I feel like there's just enough bitterness on the back end to kind of clean the palate. I want to go back and have that second, that next sip, too. Because yeah. right now, I just finished the, and See, now I'm sitting there, I, I, and I'm wishing I had a little bit more to wash it off, because the beginning of the sip was sweeter, and the back end was a little bitter. I just, I need a little bit more of one or the other in order for me to just keep drinking it. Right. For See, me to want more than the, just the second glass. Right. See, for me, this has created that magical connection, that magical closed loop. Where I just want to keep drinking it because I get the first sensation, then I get the second sensation. You want, the first... you want a didgeridoo of this? If it didn't warm up every time I was rebreathing it, yeah. yes, I would totally do that. Because I want to stay that nice, just below room temperature. Please. Please. <laughs> I want to stay that nice, just below room temperature. Just below room temperature. Perfect spot. Don't give this to me in a frosted glass or I will punch you. Oh, God. <laughs> Can I say how frustrating that is all the time oh, to get yeah. everything in a frosted glass? But stop I, I, stop a, a quick story. So I went to a, uh, admit like a, I think it was a Smoky Bones or something. Okay. Decent barbecue. It was up in all the Albany area, and I'm there with my father-in-law and my wife, and I ordered a beer and I and I looked at the waitress and I'm like, please do not put it in a frosted mug. And she just looked at me like I had four heads. Like, oh yeah. Like. Why? And I think I ordered a Guinness or something, or whatever, God. whatever it was. I, I got a Guinness and a frost mug. Like it was, it was a stout. It was something. It was a similar style to this. I ordered something that should never come in a frosted mug. And she looked at me like, "Well, why wouldn't you want it in a frosted mug? The frosted mugs are fancy." Right? I scold. Yeah, you know, like the mountains turn blue. You wanted that, right? I'm like, <laughs> like I don't, want my, I don't want my blue balls blue, and I don't want my mountains. I don't want to meet your daddy. Just bring me it in a room temperature yeah, glass, like, please. Just put it in a regular glass. Just bring it to me, and I'll be very happy. You know, and thankfully she did. But she looked. But she looked at me like, 
what's wrong with you? Like, why would I do that? The frosted glass, from what I understand, is essentially the same thing as a lime to a Corona. Yeah. They were like, wow, this tastes terrible. Put a lime in it. <laughs> same thing with the, with the, uh, um, the corn flavor for most like American lagers, yeah. American light lagers. And any level of like potential acetaldehyde in it, if you just make it cold, you can't taste. It. Yeah. Which an American light lager, like yeah, sure, give it to me in a fucking frosted glass. Doesn't matter. I don't want to taste it. I just want to get drunk. You know, um, if that's all that's on the menu, I'll have milk. Like yeah. of anything but that. Yeah. Uh, I really like this poor one. Choice. What? Dairy was a poor choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, this one's going to be a growler. I could totally just keep drinking this one. And really enjoy it. I will also go growler. I, I totally agree. Cool. I mean, like from a judging standpoint, I, I, I just don't. I don't, I don't think it's better. Like I think it's pretty much the. Like, if, you, if you yeah, if you were gonna like, um, rate this like commercial example, like it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I, like I said, I'm really enjoy these three beers. Um, I don't know how big the distribution area is for Atlantic. I think it's a pretty regional kind of thing. I don't think they really go too far outside of the main area. Um, but I've never seen it on the island, have you? No. no. I mean, I've never seen it this far south. So, um, Wish it was available, because I would totally pick up a, a sixer of that and keep it around. I play every, like, other year. Yeah, every every, like th- every third or... year I go, we go up to Maine to play golf. Uh-huh. And um, I'm, I'm going to Try to uh, yeah. put this in the the phone. Like, hey, remember to bring some of this home. Steal some some old person's car. Drive there myself. What are you doing? I'm just going here. They kind of, I'm gonna get my clubs out of the car. I want to clean them. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so just for hell, I thought I'd check the uh, BJCP and see what they actually listed as examples. Yeah, tell me this is on there. It's that not. Would, that would crack me up. It's oh, not. Great. But the last thing that is listed as an example is Porterhouse Wrestlers 4X. All right. That sounds that sounds like something dirty. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. I like it. I want a steak now. <laughs> I hear Florida House. I'm like, yeah, I want that beer and a steak and a baked potato. That'd be pretty killer. Not wrestlers. 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. So I mean, if anybody out there and um, you know has ever been to Atlantic Brewing Company, tried any of these, give us a shout. Let us know what you think about it. I would love to, in season three, actually start to hear some from some listeners a little more consistently. That'd be fantastic. It would be fantastic. Um, so listen up after the end of the episode for all the uh, contact info. You can always get to us. Except for voicemail. Our voicemail is in the credits because yeah. we, we did record. those once. Yeah. And we never got uh, Amy to re-record that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, guys. Anything else that we want to talk about? No. I all right. Well, cheers, everybody, and if you're up that way, enjoy. Cheers. Buenas suerte. If you enjoyed Beertastic Voyage, please be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and don't forget to review and rate us. The guys can be found online at www.beertasticvoyage.com, on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash beertasticvoyage, and Twitter and Instagram at beertasticshow. Or send them a good old-fashioned email at beertasticvoyage at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and cheers for local beers.